All right, for our last video, we're going to be doing the hexagon and snail cam. We're in activity 4.5, cams in motion, and we're going to be doing the hexagon and snail cams. You can see, again, between 1.5 and 3 for the nominal diameter, or nominal dimension, and the quarter inch hole. So we're going to open up Inventor and make a new standard part and start with the sketch on the XY. Again, I like to have the rectangle in the center because that's going to help us out later down the road. Now, for the rectangle, or sorry, the square in the center, for the rectangle, or the hexagon tool, we can come down under rectangle to polygon, click in the center, and click on the outside. Don't hit done until you're done. A common mistake people make is they hit done and then think they're going to go draw it, but you actually have to draw it, and then you can hit done. Done just closes it. Now, I like to dimension across the flats, not like I did there, flat to flat, and make that 1.5. But you'll notice that I'm still able to rotate my sides. Okay, they can spin around. I look really close, they're not lined up with, you know, the center point where they should be. There we go. So you can see now they, it, that it rotates. Okay, we don't want it to be able to do that. So either the horizontal or vertical constraint and click on one of the lines. Don't click on a midpoint, don't click on an end point. It needs to be one of the lines, so be careful. And now you can see that it's fully constrained and we would just extrude that quarter inch symmetric and that would be our hexagon. I'm gonna go back into our sketch, get rid of the hexagon and show you how to do the snail cam. To start this one, it's best if you start with a circle. I was using two arcs before and a student suggested starting with a circle and I think that's gonna be a lot easier. Once you've got the circle, we need an arc to come up to the top. You can see the snail cam here, it's gonna have an arc coming from here up to the top and that circle in the center is gonna be solid. So you click on your bottom point, your top point, and then try to get it to snap right there if you can. See on the bottom how it makes a tangent? If not, that's fine, we'll be able to fix that. Once we've got our arc, we need a line coming from our point down to the circle. So the vertical constraint is really gonna help us out a lot here. From this point to the center point, from the top point of the arc to the center point, and from the bottom point of the arc to the center point. And then of course, dimensioning things And now you can see that everything is fully constrained. If it's not constrained, it's probably because you don't have these vertical constraints between the point, the end point of the arc and the center point, the other end point of the arc and the center point, or the center of the arc and the center point. So be careful that you uh, make sure you get all of those as you're going through. If you can't figure out what's wrong, Let me put some dimensions in here now. Should have removed some of my constraints. Okay, so I hit escape to get out of my dimensioning tool. Sorry about that. And you can see that, you know, there are things that are green still. So I can click and pull on them and see, oh, when I move it, I go to pull it, this bottom is able to kind of move around wherever it wants to. And we don't want it to look you know, like that, that's kind of more like a propeller, not a snail cam. So we need to use the, first off, get it kind of close to where it's supposed to be, and then use the vertical constraint between the center point and the center, or the end point and the center point, and that'll give you a good snail cam shape. Again, finish your sketch, extrude, click on both parts, make it symmetric, 
0.25. And under the origin folder, little triangle, open it up. We've got our planes that we want to make visible, as well as the Z axis that's going to be going through the center and help us do some rotation when we start doing some movement constraints.